There's so much talk these days about people living a successful life or people being a success or having or running a successful business, successful organization and even a successful ministry. Usually the indices for such a conclusion is based on a secular perspective. A fine house, brand new cars, money in the bank, fame, renown, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, Christians are caught up in these pursuits for success as defined by the world, much to their own hurt. So what is success from the Christian perspective? In the scripture text that we just read, we find a few comments that the Lord Jesus made. It is worthy of note that um, these comments actually were made shortly after uh, he had told them that he was going to be killed and Peter had said, far be it from you, uh, and the Lord had to tell Peter, get thee behind me, you savor the things of men, not the things of God. Because Peter, as far as Peter was concerned, death was not the issue for the Lord. He didn't know that the success of Jesus' ministry had death included in it. And that without his death, there was no success in ministry, in his ministry. So let's look at what he's saying. In that scripture, that he is warning us, his disciples. He says, if you desire to follow me, three things we must do. Number one, deny yourself. There are things that you, 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 you legitimate, legitimately can get in this world. You should legitimately, you could legitimately pursue. But for his sake, did you deny those things? So those things could actually be your birthright in the house. Where you have a right to property. But because the Lord has something else for you, you deny yourself such a right. He's not asking you to deny yourself of something that is not legitimately, that does not legitimately belong to you. No. It's talking about something that legitimately belongs to you. Deny yourself for his sake. Secondly, he says, take up your cross. The cross was a symbol of a very cruel death by the Romans in their time. And so when he said, take up your cross, he was saying, get ready for death. Because in those days, when you, when you, when you see a man, when you saw a man, rather, carrying a cross, you have seen a man going to his own execution. Because the Romans were so cruel, they even made you carry your cross, which was what the Lord Jesus Christ did. So he's saying to us, we must be ready to take up our cross. What he's saying is be ready to die for the sake of the gospel. And then he says, follow me. Follow my path. Follow the things that I'm doing. Do as I do. Do as also as I say. Not just do as I say, but not as I do, but as I do also. That's the first thing he says. If you desire, if it is your desire that is, you must deny yourself. There are legitimate things that you need to deny yourself of. Take up your cross, be ready to die. And then come ahead and follow me. He told that young rich man the same thing. He said, go and sell everything that you have. Deny yourself of your wealth. Come and then follow me. The man couldn't do it. He turned back. He had regarded success to be his wealth. But the Lord was defining, redefining success to him. The second thing the Lord tells us in, that, in, in, in those verses that we read. He said, if you desire, if, if your desire are that, or your goal is to save your life in this world, you will lose it in eternity. If your goal is to keep alive in this world, you will lose it in eternity. If your goal is to enjoy the best of this world, you will lose your life in eternity. But, if you lose, you see, he didn't say if you desire to lose, if you actually lose your life here on the earth, for the sake of Christ, what does it mean to lose your life? Like I said, like he said again, those things that you legitimately can lay hold of. If you leave them, because it's, it's part of your life. It's a, it's a legitimate right to own property. If your father has given it to you as an inheritance. But if in inheriting that property, 
The gospel cannot be preached by you. And you let it go. You have lost your life. That's what he's saying. Here. If you lose your life for the sake of Christ and for the gospel's sake in this world, you will save it in eternity. You will save it rather for eternity. So he's given here a trade-off. You want life, you will lose it in eternity. You want it here, you will lose it in eternity. You are prepared to lose it here, you will gain it in eternity. So basically, you, you, are, you are not losing anything by foregoing those things that the Lord, that, that the people of this world hold dear. Paul said, I count not my life dead. Reality is that you and I must consider our lives cheap in this world so that they can be there before God. The Bible says, I think that's Psalm 118 or so, it says, Precious in the sight of God is the death of one saint. When a saint dies, it is precious to God. The one can laugh at him, the one can do whatever, but in the sight of God, that saint's life is precious. The third thing he says, from the verse of scripture that we read, which we want to notice that if you gain the whole world and lose your life, what is the gain? What is the profit? In other words, anything you gain here on the earth, there is no gain to it. If you lose your life in the process. But if in gaining the world you can gain your life, fine. But I want to tell you the truth. You can't gain both. You have is a trade-off. There's a trade-off. You are going to gain one and lose the other. You can't have them both. We live in this world, yes, but we are not of this world. So you can't gain what we are not of and expect to keep your soul. It's a trade-off. The Bible tells us to live in this world as pilgrims. That we should be mindful of the losts that are in this world because they war against what? Your soul. So you can't go for this world and keep your soul. They are warring against your soul to defeat it. You will lose it in eternity. Finally, he says, if you are ashamed of me and my word in this adulterous and sinful world, he's not talking of a fantastic world. He has already defined this world what it is. This any generation you are in, he has defined. He says it's adulterous. That is, there are no loyalties. There's no fidelity. There's no faithfulness in this world. No allegiance. No long-lasting allegiance. And the world is sinful. He says, if you're ashamed of me in this world, if you're ashamed of my word in this world, then I'll be ashamed of you in the presence of my Father and the angels. Which means, I will not be able to speak for you before him because you were ashamed to speak for me before me. That's what it means. So those of us who are ashamed to talk to people about Jesus, and that's virtually everybody, at one time or the other we are ashamed to speak of Jesus because of the environments that we find ourselves in. Be careful. We might get there and the Lord might say, I don't know you. I'm ashamed to talk to, 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 to present you to my family. Be careful. So, who is a success and who is a failure? Is it the man who makes it on the earth or the one who makes it to 